Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the May 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So yesterday I debuted the latest sheet load of cards, May 2021, and showed you the very first set of cards I made using it. Today, I'm going to show you how I made those cards, but before we get into more about that, I have a couple housekeeping things that I want to get out of the way now. First of all, and I did mention it in yesterday's video, tomorrow I'm going to be back with the details of an extra special giveaway. This month's first set features stamps from Ink Road. I used the Mr. Rogers theme set called Neighbor, but I was sent a few more sets from Laura, the owner. Tomorrow, I'm going to share with you the other sets I received and tell you about my biggest single giveaway ever. She has provided me with a $100 store credit to give away to one lucky subscriber to my channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to click on that subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified as soon as that video goes up, ring that bell. I, this is so exciting. I'm so super excited to be able to share that with you. Thank you, Laura. And the second piece of information is a little reminder for you. Don't forget that today, all of my collaborators will be sharing their first sets either here on YouTube, over on Instagram, or on their blogs. Everybody is linked in that description box below, so I hope you'll go check them out and leave them some love. If you haven't already downloaded the latest free printable and you're going to want to make a sheet load of cards for yourself, make sure to visit yesterday's video when you're done here. It will be linked in the description box below and popped up at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and see what supplies I'll be using today. For my pattern papers today, I pre-chose the floral and wood grain pieces from my 6x6 Home Again paper pad from Cartabella. This pad was a gift from subscriber Karen C, so she's kind of sponsoring today's video as well. Thank you, Karen. I will be coloring my image with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens. I pre-chose kind of a navy and a green to go with the card stocks. I have 44 Deep Green and number 35 Deep Blue. I will be blending those with my clear blender and to stamp onto, I'll be using Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I find for me that works the best with these pens. From the stamp set, I'm using of course the cardigan and the two sentiments. The first one says, I like you just the way you are. And the second one is the greatest gift you ever give is your honest self. I thought these would be great cards for some friends. My matting cardstocks are in the background. I got out two Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus pieces for the background of my cards. And then for my mats, I just got out a piece of navy cardstock from my stash. I will also, of course, have cardstock for my card bases, but that's just your standard heavyweight white. I'm stamping and heat embossing with Versamark and Detail Silver. And if I add anything else when I'm doing my process, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But if I leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I will be doing the cutting. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the two sheets of six by six pattern paper per the instructions on the printable. Now mine did have that little hole at the top, so I needed to cut that down before I could cut it to the final dimensions. Now I won't talk too much about the specific dimensions in the process video, because you do have all of those in front of you. But once I have cut the six by six into quarters, I do take one of those 
and cut that down into thirds. Now you'll see here, after I cut the first one, it's kind of too skinny for me to hold my fingers there and finish the cutting. So I brought in a piece of Scotch Blue removable tape that I had on my desk, and I had that hold my pattern paper in place while I made that last cut. I cut the second sheet just like this, and then I'm gonna move on to my cardstock mats. The first cardstock that I'm gonna cut is CS1, and the instructions call for two sheets. But once you cut down to the final size, you'll actually end up with eight pieces. So I did over cut here. I could have stopped after six, but you'll just follow those dimensions to cut it down for your background cardstock. Next, I brought in one piece of navy blue cardstock to cut down per the dimensions of CS2. You will actually need one full sheet and then a little scrap for the sixth mat for your little skinny strip. To start cutting this piece, I cut two strips that were three and a quarter inches wide, and then I cut each of those into three three and a quarter inch squares, and then that leaves a final piece at the bottom that is just perfect for CS2B, which is three and a quarter by one and a quarter. That final skinny strip at the side that was left over, I cut that into as many of the skinny mats as I could, which it yields three, but then this will only yield you five total. Because I didn't have a scrap of this colored cardstock, I did bring in a full sheet and just quickly cut a strip and then down to the size that I needed. And lastly for the cutting, I brought in a piece of white cardstock to cut down for CS3, which are the sentiment pieces. Now I am gonna cut mine a little bit differently. Originally it called for this to be cut at two inches wide by two and three quarters inches tall, but because my sentiment is a little bit longer, I'm actually gonna make it two and a quarter inches wide. These pieces would be a great way to use up any scraps of white cardstock if you have those. You definitely don't need to use a full sheet. You might have already noticed from the card sketch that the sentiment piece does have kind of a fun shape. The top two corners are going to get rounded and I brought in my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper and I'm using the quarter inch side to just chop off or round off those top two corners. Once those top two corners were rounded, I brought in my fine point scissors and I cut the fishtail at the bottom. This is a rather shallow fishtail, so I couldn't use my regular Stampin' Up! one, but it's super simple to cut a fishtail. You just kind of figure out where you think the center is, make a small cut into it, and then you cut in from each side to that point. Once you've done that, you can either use that first one as a template for the remainder, or you can just hand cut them each just on their own. You'll see here that I did stack up two to cut two at once. Now it's time to stamp those sentiments. I will be using Gina K Designs in the Navy Ink Cube for this. I thought that it went well with the pattern papers. And the reason I'm using the Misty is not only can I set each sentiment up once and stamp it three times, but I also need to make sure the placement is good on my sentiment piece. You'll see from the sketch that the blue cardstock will go across the center. So I place that with the magnet where it will eventually go on the card and then I set up my sentiment trying to get it centered from top to bottom in that open area at the top. Once I have it in place I just pick that up with the door of my Misty, ink it up and stamp it and because this is a new stamp I did need to stamp this first one twice just to get a good impression but I think I only had to stamp twice on this very first one. Once that first sentiment piece was stamped, I replaced it with a new clean piece of white cardstock and just continued to stamp all of my sentiments until I had three of each saying. In addition to the sentiment, I will also be stamping an image to fussy cut out and add to the card front. Don't forget, sheet load is always just a jumping off point. You can add or take away whatever you want. 
I will be stamping the cardigan image onto some Strathmore Bristol Smooth to color with my Zig markers. And I found some pieces where I thought I would be able to stamp two onto each one. Now because I am going to heat emboss, I used my embossing buddy on this, so my powder only sticks to where I want it. When I have stamped my cardigan, which I did ink it up and stamp it twice so it was nice and juicy, I just flipped my piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth 180 degrees and stamped it again. I stamped and added powder until I had six images and I did go ahead and heat set those off camera. I will eventually be fussy cutting these images out, but I wanted to go ahead and color them up now so I had some extra area around each of the cardigans to hold on to while I was coloring. Now my zig coloring is nothing magical. I just put down color where I want the darkest shade to be and then I pull the color out into the open area. Now you'll see every once in a while I do kind of color off that dark color off my brush just so there is some kind of shading on the image. I colored three of these in navy and three in the green and you'll see there that my cat Linden was also very interested in learning about zig markers so she sat and watched while I colored. I did end up pulling in a brown marker for the hangers and then I fussy cut all six images off camera. This was really pretty simple to cut out. Now all of the pieces are ready so I can start putting my cards together. Now normally I'll kind of show you how to put together one card, but I decided today I would do a true production or mass assembly line. I matted each of the pattern papers onto their card stocks individually, then I placed the pattern papers onto the green, and then I kept adding the remainder. And while you watch me work on this process, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. And today's question is actually inspired by what I just talked about. I would like to know, when you're making your sheet load of cards, do you do more of a production line where you do each piece on its own? Or do you do where you make one card at a time, matting and adhering each piece as you go along until one card is finished and then starting on the next? Make sure to leave your answer in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For me, if I am not on camera, I generally do what I am showing today, where I do each individual piece at a time and then put them all together. One thing I do want to point out is because my sentiment strip hangs off the right side of the pattern paper and there are two layers on the left, I did bring in some scrap strips of cardstock and I folded those over and adhered them to the right side. This way the card is a little bit more uniform or flat from left to right. If you ever watch Christy Marcotte, she does this a lot, so I decided today to take a cue from her and I really do like how it keeps that flat. To adhere my cardigans to the card front, I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarter inch width and once again I did a little production line of these. I put a piece on the back of each of the cardigans and then when I had that done these got placed onto the card fronts. Now this foam tape, as long as you burnish the back of that release paper, it really does come off pretty easily. So I was able to put those six cardigans on in no time and have them popped up off the cards. Next I brought in six card bases that I had cut and folded off camera and each of these green card stocks with the cardigan got placed centered on the front of those. Now I did want to add a little sparkle but not be over the top so I brought in my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots in the silver or transparent slash silver and I placed three on each card front. These give a nice little silver shine to bring out the silver embossing and they don't add a whole lot of bulk to the card because they're nice and flat. I also have these in gold and I love to use them. If you want to check these out, I do have them linked in the description box below. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators, channels, blogs, and Instagram accounts and leave them some love. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.